Well, took the Evil for a cruise after getting everything buttoned up. It went pretty good. And then uh, went home, you know, took a little nap, got back in the car, drove to get up some Thai food, and as I was leaving the parking lot, my serpentine belt shredded. So I guess I'm living that plastic underdrive pulley carnage life now. So it looks like we're gonna have to purchase that here coming up. Got the replacement deal right there. So I'm gonna drive to a parking lot and fix my car that's been chilling in all the night. And uh, yeah, let's do it. Man, chilling all night right here. Just uh, got help from a dude named Samir here. He's uh, working at O'Reilly's. Hook me up, dude. He helped uh, hold the tensioner and get the belt on and all that stuff. So you can see the carnage, look at that. That's all residual belt damage right there, so. Yeah, serious business, but we got a brand new Gates on right there, and uh, I'm about to take the truck back, come back, pick this thing up. This dude's just chilling in my dream car. GT3, new one. Oh my god. So we are following up on the serpentine built issue and it is an issue. I'll tell you that um, I am I think like two weeks I think into my new serpentine belt here and uh, It's shredded. So let me just kind of pop the hood real quick so you guys can See what's going on brand new gates uh, 1033 timing belt and uh, It ain't pretty y'all You can see I'm already off an entire tooth and one whole thing has shredded off. One whole spline worth of material. Look at that, it's insane. <laughs> so I've been running, I was running, doing like 140 and I felt it like lose that spline, like it shredded. So it's gone and in the air somewhere or it's probably in the engine bay. But you can even, I don't know if the light will pick that up right here, let me see. You can see that, that whole spline's off right there. Um, that's on the alternator. So, what the issue is, is there's a the little plastic idler pulley. So they're the ones that, they aren't doing anything right here. So there's one right there. Mm, you can see, yeah, that's it right there. But they're plastic and what they'll do is the back of the wheel gets kind of sharp and it'll start to shred the belt as it rotates more and it's more common as you add power to these cars and go faster so if you travel at high speeds or you put down a lot of power you're going to run into this issue so i just ordered the hyundai um idler pulleys which are the exact same thing as these evo idler pulleys but they're made out of metal and the plastic won't get, or the metal won't get sharp like the plastic does and then sever the belt. So um, I got a new belt, um, two new pulleys on the way. Um, I'm about to get this thing up. I'm not even gonna drive it anymore. Um, just cause like I already know if I go out there, I'll try to put my foot on the floor and that thing will shred. And so I'm just gonna wait a day or two for it to come in. I'm gonna get this thing jacked up and work on a couple other things while we wait for all that to happen. All right, so a little update. We've got, you know, the shredded belt and everything. You can see the gap there. You know, this is belt number two in two weeks. Got the parts coming in already. Here's what these pulleys look like. So these are the new updated pulleys. They're metal. Can you hear that? So this is legitimate. So the OEM ones are made out of plastic and they have, you know, these little perforated holes around it and stuff. So once I pull those off, you'll be able to see what the flaws are in them, but Basically what happens is the plastic has grooves that wear down and stuff and as it wears down here in the middle the outer part over here becomes sharp and uh, if that belt wobbles at all or as it gets worn it'll lacerate eventually and then all of a sudden just shred into a bunch of pieces so yes sir we got these so the two idle pulleys right here are going to be replaced 
and uh, I'm going to inspect what the uh, tensioner pulley looks like, but if it's in good shape, I'm just going to leave it be. If it's in bad shape, um, you know, it's down there, but um, I'm going to go ahead and replace it. So I'm going to order the whole assembly, I think, just because I want everything to be perfect. So peace of mind, but yeah, that's the update. Probably going to go ahead and get this thing up, cut that belt out and uh, remove the idler pulleys and uh, see what I need to do to put these on. Maybe I need to exchange some stuff, maybe not, we'll see. All right, here we are working on the pulley upgrade. So got the belt off. I did the double uh, wrench method. We stack wrenches for leverage. I do it from the bottom. Uh, that's easiest for me for whatever reason. Um, some people like doing it from the top, but for whatever reason, I feel like I get like more mm, whatever that is. You know what I'm saying? So, we're gonna take this one off right here. And, uh, 5 8 works if you don't have a 16. 16 is like what I think it's exact is, but maybe not. I don't know. 5 8 works fine, so that's what I used um, down to break off the tensioner. And, uh, I'm breaking off the idler pulley right here. So this is one of two idler pulleys. One right here. Then you got your tensioner right there. You can kind of see it. And then, right below, you can see all three right there, boom. So idle, tension, idle. So we're gonna remove two idles and uh, see what this tensioner one looks like too. All right, I just got this free right now. Okay. So I don't know if we have to keep this little thing or not. Let me look. So. Yeah. There's like a lot of junk on this, but this doesn't look like awful. Um, obviously you can see where some stuff has melted off, but I don't know what kind of effect. That, maybe that had the effect on it, I don't know. Maybe it kind of mushed it to the side. That might be burning from the old belt. It is lightly pitted. You can see... Right, oh, come on, focus. You can see that light groove there. I don't know if that's supposed to be there or not, or if that's some wear, but yeah. <laughs> Go into that nice smooth metal. Oh, there we go. So this is what I've done. Um, I don't think we retained this guy, but this is the one that was on the back side against the motor, and it looked like it needed it to space it out properly. So I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that's fitted in there. Um, also because like this thing's a little extra girthy as well. I think it sticks out more on the nubby side on the soft side, but we'll see. And um, I also pulled, there's a little plastic like gasket on this guy that I put that held the bearing centered um, on this bolt so that, you know, it doesn't spin all wobbly and stuff like that. So I pulled that off of this Hyundai one and I put it on my OEM Mitsubishi bolt. So I'm retaining the OEM bolt and then whatever this metal piece is so that it's spaced properly off of the engine. This is what it looks like on the other side. Um, I don't think this is proper to have this in there. It doesn't look like it's going to sit right and it'll just cause problems. So I'm pretty sure you just go like this on, on this side and it's good to go. That's how Hyundai does it anyway. So I'm going to pop that on. That's going to be the top one done. And then we'll go do the bottom one. All right, correction. Go ahead and don't use the little back piece that was um, spaced out on the OEM one. It was causing it to not spin. So I was showing you this piece earlier. Do not put that on. Just retain the OEM long bolt because this one is too short to get into your engine block. So go ahead and just pull the bolt out, swap over your OEM one, and you're good to go. Do not use any of this, and uh, everything is good to go. So we'll show you. Nice little new pulley right there. You can see the shine, can't see like good details, but um, the reason I knew not to use the back piece is because it would not spin freely. So I bolted it all up and it would not spin. Now it spins freely with the bearing pressed against the block. So yeah, we're good to go. I'm gonna do the bottom and uh, I have a serpentine build at O'Reilly's. I might go get it, I might not, we'll see. Um, because I have one coming in the mail that I've already paid for. The O'Reilly's one is just a backup plan, so we'll see. Yeah, so that's the damage I forgot to show y'all. So that's what happens. Um, and it just, the whole side is ate up. So I'm going to show you. I already got that one pulley out. But the tensioner pulley, which is the most critical one for my case, is up here. Um, let's see if I can get some better light. So, yeah, you're going to... 
do a um, basically to break loose the tensioner fully specifically which is not the bottom one it's the second one up right right there you're going to righty tidy it to lefty loose it so you have to basically turn it to the right to break it free because you um, pull the tension off by putting the ratchet on there and pulling the other way so this is a reverse threaded um, pulley so one thing to mention so that middle pulley you're going to do the opposite of what you normally would with every other bolt and screw in the world so all right it's the next day might as well show you all what's going down went ahead and picked up the uh, gates belt there's your number k061033 that's the one that fits the evo 10 Rolling with the regular micro v not the rpm this is the cheap boy i don't give a flying so this was the bottom pulley and i'm guessing that this was the one that was the one that caused all the damage because all these little grooves come on focus baby look at that just filled caked with belt material all of those like see that there's no cake in there and then those just have like cake you know what I'm saying so have a birthday so just look at that right there this is it's all just junk right there and what I think is on that left side there all that extra gunk pushed it towards the right side and the right side was the sharp side I can't get the camera to focus on it very well but if you there's you can see that imperfection right there that's a little sharp point but that's definitely what caused it so I think this is the wheel that did the damage the most of it but with the residuals I've been finding on these other ones like broken belt material probably a global cause but this is the wheel that's doing the shredding all right y'all third wheel is here here it is it's going on the tensioner here's my ten old uh, tensioner bolt and pulley here we need a 5 8 inch uh, sized hole washer to space out the wheel further so that the bearing can separate itself from this surface right now um, if you look right here this is the um, wheel material and it rubs against the edge of this right now so we have to space out um, the wheel just a tad bit more so that's only resting on the bearing so this wheel can spin freely without causing any friction on the rest of that tensioner wheel so yep we're gonna head to Lowe's get a 5 8 inch washer to space it out and uh, we'll be back and throw it on just get the three quarters uh, 5 8 didn't fit I'm not gonna mess with the Dremeling and all that crap I just went and made a whole nother trip it only took me about 18 minutes um, and an additional dollar and seven cents so I used the three quarter on the back side. Uh, I just reverse threaded um, this bad boy because that's how it goes on the tensioner. I'm going to tighten it down and I'm going to get this on so I can go enjoy myself. And one thing to note about all three of these pulleys is when you're torquing them down, I think that the specs is 36 or so. So 36 foot pounds. Um, and uh, I think I'm just going to go ahead and do 38 foot pounds because I want to send it and I want to make sure we're snug. So I'm going to 38 them and uh, we'll be sending it. Huh. Alright, so I finally got this thing on. It was uh, much easier with these new pulleys because they're rounded on the edge and you can slide it on and that like sharp edge doesn't like inhibit you getting the belt on. So that was much easier. And I had a hand from Alex so that made it pretty easy but I definitely recommend doing this. I literally about broke down and cried earlier because my bottom idler I uh, was trying to thread it in and it was only getting about halfway and I saw the bolt starting to tilt and cross thread. I backed it out, looked inside the hole and there's definitely a bunch of junk in there and stuff. So um, yeah, I got lucky, WD-40 did it, cleaned it out and just took my time going real slow on it and got it back. So we're up and running, um, that's probably going to do it for this one. I'm probably going to show you guys some stuff on this car over here next. I'm just going to show you guys real quick what's under the hood. I guess this is a big deal, this yeah. turbo right now, because aren't you the only person like in the U.S. with this installed? Anyway, in the world right now. Oh, in the world. So this is the first in the cars. world, Customer which cars. basically means you're going to see a lot of footage in the next week on this. So what's this turbo? It's an EQT turbo, but it's like a... Uh, it's 
like a 6254. It's basically like, what, 700 wheel? Yeah. Potential? Easily. Sheesh. And some. It's installed already. We're just waiting on logs from what it sounds like to boot it up. There it is. The thing is, the thing's just gonna, huge. It's gonna make some power. Oh, yeah. But yeah, appreciate you tuning in. This is coming next, and uh, we'll show you what's up.